I could never have imagined how rewarding and, and how amazing this experience with City Year could be. Ms. Kim is very calm. She keeps a good poker face. Even when, when things get a little hairy in the class, she's very calm. She's a cheerful person. She's a helpful person. She's a careful person. But she's very good at uh, redirecting uh, negative behavior. If we get in arguments and stuff, she helps us cool down. Deja is uh, very rambunctious. <laughs> rambunctious, I think, would be the best word to describe her. High energy. When she's up, she's up, and when she's down, she's down. But now she's she's learned this technique that I taught her, where she will look at her hands, like count to three, just go one, two, three, take a huge, very <laughs> exaggerated deep breath, and then sit down and do her work. Before, she would just run out and have a meltdown, but now she's learning how to control her emotions and not let it get in the way of her schoolwork. Ms. Kim has really taught her how to reflect when she does things. The other day, Deja, she yelled at me. I didn't even say anything to her. And then at the end of the class, she uh, she came back and, and and apologized. I said, "Look at you being a little angel." I said, "You been to charm school?" She said, "No, Miss Kim's been trying to teach me how to how to have better manners." She made me feel like I can never give up. Knowing that I'm actually making a difference for students like Deja, when I can physically see her take a deep breath to calm her down, that's when I say, "I did something that was worth it today, and I taught somebody a skill that's gonna help get them through life." I teach fifth grade here at Neville Thomas, but even the kids who are on grade level, uh, we're working on their comprehension skills and improving their comprehension, so a lot of them have deficits uh, in their reading. I think Thomas uh, can be, represents an underserved community, and I think that um, it's a prime location for City Year to come in and do the work we do. Mike is very even-tempered. A great man, responsible, respectful, kind. Helpful. He loves the kids, and that comes out in everything he does. He has this reading group, and we're talking about this. We talk about these books. Andrew's an awesome student who was a little bit more quiet during the beginning of the year, kind of shy. And he talks about the um, story and helps us with our question. Now he's always coming up to me with all these ideas. When I need help with an answer or a question, he talks it through it. And, now, and I can understand it. At the beginning of the year, I was like, Shania Watts, by the end of the year, you and I are going to be best friends. It's tough work, but you're not going to come in one day and just change everything. Um, so I think it's important to you know, recognize those small victories and appreciate them uh, when they come. And it just makes the work that much more rewarding. He's always there when I need him. You know, just small things like that kind of make you, you know, a little bit of happiness, a little bit of pride, and just kind of reaffirm the work I'm doing and, you know, why I'm here in the first place. I remember the Timbs and the red jacket from me being a kid. And the people in the red jackets were just so nice, but they were really down to earth and they were young. And it definitely stuck with me um, as I got older. For now, he's a student I had this year. He's very enthusiastic about learning. He wants to learn. But sometimes I have to slow for nail down so that he gets his work correct. The, the hardest thing about school is reading. When I saw him in the beginning of the year, he told me he wanted to be the president of the United States. The very next day, he got into a fight. She said, fools entertain fools. Yes, only fools entertain foolishness. So if they entertain the drama or the kids that are yelling and screaming across the room at them, then they're being foolish as well. But he's definitely a smart kid, an ambitious kid, and I just want him to not get distracted by the other things. He needs a lot of redirecting, and so we're working on that. Most of the kids that she helps are the ones mainly that need that extra push. They see her somewhat a little bit like an older sister or an older sibling, and they have a lot of respect for her. I also try to make sure that I'm more of a mentor to my kids and not another teacher, because that creates that open line of communication. Sometimes when I read and it's a word that I don't know, she helps me with that word. She tells me to sound it out and do syllables to get that word. I, I get really happy about the fact that he knows how to bounce back, as well as the fact that he also knows how to own up, because a lot of students haven't gotten there yet. So I'm, I'm really proud of him.
we partner City Year Corps members with teachers inside classrooms, it just creates a, a marriage that I believe every school should have. City Year is very, very important. I mean, City Year helps me out exponentially. It's like having a second me in the class. A lot of the children in this school are at-risk children, so they need a lot of attention, a lot of extra assistance. In times of change and shrinking budgets, we need to find ways where city or partnerships exist because it's that kind of work that's moving schools forward. My city year is energetic. My city is intelligent. My city year is rewarding. My city year is my advocate. My city year is my right hand. My city year is caring. My city year is empowering. My city year is respectful. My city year is dedicated. My city year is wonderful. My city year is life-changing. <laughs>